My name is Jerry Kudak and I'm the fire chief, current fire chief for the city of West Bend. And that extreme privilege that I've had since 2012. Um, and as you look around, the members of the West Bend Fire Department is what makes this a, a huge privilege for me to be um, the chief of this department. Our presentation today is going to have three different parts to it. The first part is going to be recognizing those that have served for the past 150 years with the West Bend Fire Department and a little bit of its history. We're going to have a rededication of our monument. And we're also going to recognize those that gave the ultimate sacrifice and never went home the next day. First of all, I want to say a huge thank you to the uh, firefighters. Without them, this wouldn't be possible. Uh, this last week with our open house and everything, they put a lot of extra hours in, making sure the station was ready. A uh, thank you to the uh, 150th committee uh, who put this program together today. Without you guys, uh, this would not be possible. I think at this time, what I'd like to do, since there's so many cool people that are here that have such a history with the West Bend Fire Department is we're going to start in the front and if you served on the West Bend Fire Department or if you have a family member that's no longer with us um, and you're representing that person just kind of stand and say your name and maybe the years that that person served or that you served. So we'll start right in front. Sue. Just stand in the front. Still watch his wife in case good near. Save your speech. Thank you. <laughs> Mayor? I'm Mike Miller. I was uh, on the fire department in the early 70s. Go ahead, Harry. First tennis, uh, got on at 59 and retired at uh, 87. Mike Wolf from the 
talking from 1993 to 2017 with POC for 24 years. I started paid on call in 87, went full time in 89, and retired in 2015. James. This is actually his first week here, so he got to <laughs> throw right into it. Steve Stockhausen, 2010, active. Travis Eichmann, 2000, still active. Uh, Steve Rush, I'm a paid and qualified fighter. I started in July 1995 and still going. Probably didn't get to hear everybody's name or whatever, but again, from on behalf of the fire department that I represent now, thank you all for your service and it's all greatly appreciated. Um, Jerry Kudick started in 1985 as a paid on call firefighter, and I know everybody here is waiting for that end date, uh, but I don't have it yet. <laughs> First part of this is to kind of relive a little bit of our past 150 years. Uh, we have been lucky over the past past few years to have. Uh, gentlemen who have taken great interest in the history of the West Bend Fire Department. Uh, that first gentleman was Bill Lutz. He was a motor pump operator here with West Bend Fire Department. After he retired, we set him up with a little office and we gave him boxes and boxes and boxes and boxes of old photos and papers and things like that. And he meticulously went through them all, labeled what he, what he knew. What he didn't know, he went and he, uh, he looked up or he asked people who might have known at that time. So we've had a great start with that. Unfortunately, Bill passed away. And John Sparks has picked it up from there, and John is also a member of the, it's not Historical Society anymore, it's, is it, what's it, the History Center of Washington County. So John's here to talk a little bit about uh, the history of the West Bend Fire Department and where we, how we got to where we are today. John Chief Sparks. The history of the West Bend Fire Department. It started when it was real dark out, then it became light. And then I'll jump ahead a few years just to save some time here. Uh, 1869, we had a bunch of uh, members of our community get together and form the first fire company for West Bend. It was called the Neptune Fire Engine. Uh, they went out and they purchased an old hand pump from West from uh, Milwaukee and uh, 
felt they dealt with it for several years, like uh, 20 some, 25 years. It was in various states of disrepair, but they kept bringing it back. And in, uh, in the years the Neptune was uh, formed by Germans, all those records are lost, but we, I was able to recreate some of that through the, the newspapers. Over the years then, uh, as the city grew, or the village grew at that time, they added the Active Hook and Ladder Company. And uh, the Ad Active Hook and Ladder Company really became the, 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 the front runner for the fire department, along with the Neptune. They worked together. They, as a city, as the village became the city, they became hose company number one. And then a water power fire company was organized on the north end of the city. And that eventually was absorbed, absorbed into the fire department and became hose company number two. All, all the different companies were merged into one department in 1918. The, the members were then cross-trained. It used to be a hook and ladder company that dealt with salvage and pulling the building apart. The engine company, of course, ran the engine. With the new merger, everybody was trained on everything, which is kind of how we operate today. The city added the first steamer in the late 1800s. It was a waterous. And then in 1903, they added a, a Metropolitan La France. Also in 1903, they added the new fire hall, which was built on the old city, city uh, hall grounds off of Hickory Street. They ran out of that station until 1967 when we moved into this station. In the meantime, they also added a fire, uh, first motorized fire vehicle. Uh, 1923, they added a Seagrave engine to replace the steamer. That was the first motorized full fire engine. A ladder truck was added in 1926. That was a Kissel, believe it or not, out of Hartford. And that, that served until 1952 when we added an 85-foot aerial, the modern La France. Um, 1927, just to skip back a couple of years, the fire department started running EMS. Um, they, didn't, they didn't do a lot of EMS. It was more rescue. They did a lot of dive rescues, water rescues, but they also did the first aid. 1961, the department added merged, merged with the Barton Fire Department as part of the village city merger, and uh, they opened up station two. That ran until the late, uh, until about 1980s, and that's when we opened up the current, um, moved everybody, everybody moved into this station and became, uh, start becoming the modernized fire department we are now. They added full-time personnel and it grew into the three stations we currently have. So as you can see, the city's over 150 years, there's been a lot of action. The fire department was, was running a community in the grounds that they were the active social members of the community. They, they sponsored parades, they, they were helping at benefits, if something needed to be done, the firefighters did it. And that continues today uh, with the union uh, helping with the charitable causes, with uh, anybody needs anything, the first people they call are the fire service. So we're proud to be part of that tradition and we hope it continues on for another 150 years. Now on the other part of that, oh, it blew away on me. <laughs> uh, we, uh, we were also recognized by the governor, office of the governor of the state of Wisconsin and I have a cert certificate of commendation honoring the West Bend Fire Department's 150th anniversary. I'll read the proclamation quick. Whereas on May 1st, 1869, Albert Semler, George Sir, Henry Lemke, F. Deutsch, and Peter W. Westenberger organized West Bend's Fire Department, originally known as the Neptune Engine Company, and whereas the Neptune Engine Company joined the State Firemen's Association in 1869, petitioned for a state charter which was granted in 1870, emerged with the active hook and ladder company and the water power fire company to form the West Bend Fire Department in 1918 and whereas volunteers staffed the West Bend Fire Department until paid members were hired to meet the growing demands on the department in the 1970s and today the department is staffed by 40 career firefighters and five paid on call members many of whom hold paramedic licenses as, as well as state of Wisconsin certifications in driver operator, fire officer, fire inspector and fire instructor and Whereas the West Bend Fire Department has historically been at the forefront of emergency medical services implementation, adding their first rescue services in 1935 and responding to over 3,500 emergency medical calls in 2018. Now, therefore, I, Tony Evers, Governor of the State of Wisconsin, do hereby commend the West Bend Fire Department for their 150 years of service and congratulate them upon this milestone anniversary. Done at the Capitol in the City of Madison this 18th day of September, 2019, and assigned by Tony Evers, Governor. So. Thank you. As we continue with the 150th year celebration, we do have a couple guest speakers today. As uh, former mayor, retired mayor Miller works his way up here, uh, I just want to say a few words. If everybody knows that the mayor is the boss of the fire chief, 
So uh, I'm not the political smartest guy in the world, um, but I do realize that when anybody asks you who your favorite mayor is, you better say the current one. Um, however, Mayor Miller has always been uh, one of my favorite mayors, and that's why we asked him to speak with us today. Hello, good afternoon. It's a real honor for me to be here today, being a former paid on call firefighter. And I have some real great memories from being a firefighter, and I have some that weren't so great. But I do remember Deputy Chief Meyer was our instructor to get on the fire department. We had to do 26 weeks or month, no, weeks, yeah, 26 weeks to get on. And the first thing Deputy Chief Meyer said, we're going to ask you people to go into buildings that the rats are coming out of. Are you sure you want to do this? So uh, that was the first day at the fire station. Things I remember is with this group of men and women that I served with, you were never afraid to go into a burning building because you knew your fellow firefighters had your back. You knew if you went in with them, you were coming out with them. And it was a secure feeling to have. Other memories I had, I was very afraid of heights. I still am. If I get on a six foot step ladder, my knees shake. And one of the requirements was we had to get up to the top of the aerial ladder. And I kept telling myself on the way up, don't look down, don't look down, don't look down keep looking out and finally I looked out as a oh my god <laughs> and I froze I literally froze and, uh, Chief Meyer said hang on Miller we'll get somebody up there to help you down I said no 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 don't don't send it I don't want this ladder to wiggle <laughs> so so I really slowly shakingly got myself back on the ground so uh, that was one of my most scary memories. And the other distinction I have, and there's a few PLCs out that might be out here, we had the last rescue call on New Year's Eve, the night we went full time, and we had a tragic accident on Highway G. A person stepped out in front of a 55 mile an hour car and that was my last rescue squad call. And I remember it like it was yesterday, and that was years ago. So I'm, again, very honored to be here. I want to thank the current firefighters, but I really want to thank your families. Nobody knows how much the family of a firefighter goes through, how many special events their husbands or wife missed because they were sleeping at this station or one of the other two stations we have in the city. How many Christmas dinners, Thanksgiving dinners, birthday dinners were interrupted when your pager went off and you never thought about who you left behind. You got onto your car, got to the fire station and saved people. So I'm very honored again to be here with such dedicated people. And please, when you get home, give your family a hug and thank them for us, our, our citizens, for letting you be away from home so often. So thank you very much. In the early 70s, the West Bend Fire Department started transitioning from an all-volunteer fire department to paid on call to full-time firefighters. Those firefighters that are full-time are represented by the International Association of Firefighters uh, local 2025. Our next speaker is Steve Inhoff, who's the current president of the local 2025. It's the working relationship that we've had over the years, long before I was chief and long before Steve was president, that makes so many things possible in this fire department and in turn better serving the community. So with that, Steve Inhoff. Thank you, Chief Kudik. Um, just want to say thank you to everybody again for coming out on a beautiful fall day to help us uh, celebrate the 150 years of the West Bend Fire Department. As Chief Kudik said, my name is Steve Inhoff. I am the president of West Bend Professional Firefighters. I have the privilege and honor 
of representing the, the 35 current members at this point in time. West Bend Professional Firefighters was formed on January 4th, 1971. And in that time, the union has worked with Fire Department Administration to make sure we do the job as safe and as efficient as possible. The fire service is rife with challenges today, just as it was with the firefighters that came before us. Whether it be staffing, increased call volume, or societal, changing societal needs. By nature, firefighters always overcome no matter the physical, fiscal, or psychological cost. But today, we take a moment to celebrate the 150 years of the West Bend Fire Department, along with the sacrifices made by the firefighters and the families that came before us. This beautiful monument that was constructed and facilitated by Ben Heinen will be a constant reminder moving forward. In closing, I would like to take this opportunity to quote Fire Chief Alan Brunacini, the late Fire Chief Alan Brunacini, uh, was a fire chief for the Phoenix Fire Department for decades. The quote is, embrace the change, respect the past. Thank you. When the committee got together and started planning the agenda for today, we thought it'd be a really good idea to have a retired firefighter um, who could come and speak to us on changes that he's, he's seen in the fire department and whatever else he wanted to talk about. And then we tried to figure out who had a, who had a big personality. Uh, somehow one name came to mind, and that's the person we asked to speak, and he graciously said he would, Lieutenant Ron Schlefke. I didn't have all my ducks in her out today as I came with a helmet and a golf shirt. Why I wore the golf shirt, I have no idea. But I want to thank the fire department for the invite to come here and, and uh, for the honor of the 150 years. I, I got to meet back a lot of people that I haven't seen in 20 years. And to me, that's just a, a firefighter reunion as it's great to meet the new guys who don't know me and the old guys who did know me. And some of the things that I remember back was uh, our first call with the, uh, the defib unit that they put on our, our squad. Uh, Chief Kodak was on that call. He protocoled that thing out perfect, and he saved the guy with the defib unit. And that, to me, was an inspiration. Like, man, now we can really do something here, you know? Get us out right away, and we can really help people. Well, it really blossomed since that happened. Blossomed big time. The technology nowadays is I can't understand it, but that's probably why I retired. I couldn't understand it. But some of the good, good parts that I remember, uh, and some of the bad parts, were the camaraderie that we had on our shifts. We all we had three good shifts. They're all great people. They all got along with each other, and when things got boring we sort of stepped it up a little bit. Uh, I got three things that I remember, and one of them is called a sock bat. Did you ever hear of a sock bat? Well, we came down and went into uh, a fire call. We came downstairs, got in a fire call, and one of the gentlemen put his sleeve in his bunker coat, and there was a bat in there, okay? So the bat just flew out, took off. And Ray Roscoff, who was hired with me, he was on, I was working with him that day. He hates bats. And he, he doesn't want anything to do with bats. So Mike Tyson, who was a driver, and I was a firefighter with Benny Hearth, 
uh, we thought, well, this is our chance, you know? So what we did is we took a black sock and we tied it in a big ball. And then I was sleeping on one end up in the dorm and Mike Tyson was sleeping on the other end. Ray was sleeping in the middle. Well, we thought he was sleeping. So I took the bat and I stood up and I took the bat and I threw it and I went right over the top of Ray Roscoe. That poor guy screamed. He screamed, he got up and he ran out of the dorm. He didn't even want to come back, you know? He was a little upset with us with that one. That, that was sort of, it was sort of fun, you know? Then I had a lieutenant who's gone now. His name was Lieutenant Jerry Wolf. He's a great guy, great lieutenant. And when, <laughs> and when it come time to having lunch, Brian Meyer was our chief. Jerry Meyer, ah, oh, Jerry Meyer, Jerry Wolf would bring in some Limburger cheese. And he would put it on on the heater in where we watch television. He had to get it warm because at lunchtime when we all sat down, he spread it on his bread. Boy, that was that was really good. That was I thought that was really tasty to it, I'm not sure. But my brother-in-law, Bill Lutz, I love him dearly. He's gone. I came in to work one day, and it was, uh, I think it was a Saturday. I'm not sure, because he made chili. And it was, it was deer chili. It was venison chili. I didn't say nothing. So I, we had lunch, and I ate the chili. And then after a while, I said, man, I just, that chili, there's something wrong with it. it I, I don't feel very good. And my brother-in-law looked at me and he says, listen, you were bowling last night. Don't give me the chili deal here. I knew I seen you when you came in, your eyes were red. Don't tell me it was my chili. So I love him. We went nose to nose and that was it. It was, he was a great driver. Uh, let's see. Uh, I don't know if I can dig up any more, but uh, let's see here. Uh, oh, yeah, there was one more. And I'm not the perfect guy, and I'm going to tell you why. We got up to go on a fire call on Park Avenue and Main Street. 1050, one guy injured. So I was driving, and uh, I think Mike was in the back. I got out of the... I got out of the vehicle, I got out of the squad, and I looked, and Officer Rinzel was standing over there, and he walked over by me, and he says, boy, you really dressed for the occasion here, and I go, like, what's up? He said, your coverage slippers are still on. I go, are you kidding me? And I looked, well, it's a good thing that I had my, my turnout gear in the back, huh? Good thing I had my turnout gear in the back, I go, go put my boots on. So, some of them things were fun, you know. But when 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 the when the going got tough, you know, the the tornado in '81. That was a good one. Oh, I'll put these down here now. I didn't know if I'd come back to work after that. But the department stood behind me and they said, you gotta come back. So, after a while, took a while, I came back. But to this day, I remember that night and I'll never forget it. So, but thank you. And thank you guys. Now you know why we picked them. The second part of this ceremony is the rededication of our monument. This, uh, if you remember, these monuments were down below, and because of one individual and, and or Deputy Chief 
Beisel is going to talk about that. But because of one individual spearheading this project, we have this beautiful uh, display here today. So, Deputy Chief Beisel. Get his glasses on quick. Getting old. Sunglasses? Ah, okay, I can see. This rededication of the Firefighters Monument is a way of honoring past members who have served, present members, and those who gave the ultimate sacrifice. Most firefighters don't like any praise. It actually makes us a little uncomfortable. When I was choosing this prayer, it echoed my very thoughts I had and continue to have throughout my career. It's called When You Remember Me by Lieutenant Aaron Espy. Don't want it to blow away. When you remember me, if I am ever called to leave you unexpectedly, please take from me these parting thoughts to frame my legacy. When you remember me tomorrow, I pray you'll recall a happy soul who loved his family, loved his work as well. Please recollect a man who loved the chance to lend a hand, to save a life or property from some untimely end, someone who heard the public cry to safeguard streets and homes, deliver breath to silent lungs, to quench the hostile flames, but when you ponder how I came to make my final stand, don't make me more than what I was, a common, average man. When you reflect upon my passing, how I paid the price, remember that I knew the risks and recognized their cost. Don't make me more in death than I, in life, have ever been. Remember, simply, one who served as God and fellow man. Ben Heinen was the one who spearheaded this project, and he wrote a note. He couldn't be here today. Um, he's playing soccer for what college? Stevens Point. Up in Stevens Point, so he couldn't make it. So he wrote a letter. Hello, my name is Ben Heinen. This is his letter, not really me. Sorry, I'm not able to be at your celebration today. I would like to thank Chief Kudik and the West Bend Fire Department for allowing me to be a part of the Firefighter Monument. As many of you know, the original monument was built on the stone wall off of 7th Avenue in 1967. Unfortunately, several years ago, the wall fell, resulting in the monument being taken down. As I was working on completing my Eagle Scout Award, I knew that I wanted my Eagle Project to be the development of a new Firefighter Monument. I am honored to be part of such a special project. The Scout Oath says, on my honor, I will do my best to do my duty to God and my country and to obey the Scout Law, to help other people at all times, to keep, to keep myself physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight. I believe there is a connection between the Scout Oath and the character qualities of firefighters. Therefore, I am proud that I was able to build this monument to earn my Eagle Scout rank and also honor the firefighters that have dedicated so much. The project would not have been possible without the help of many people. Thanks to all who helped. Thanks to Chief Kudik and Deputy Chief Beistel for the many meetings we had. Thanks to Battalion Chief Sparks for the help with research and department history. I would also like to personally thank several people who helped financially and provide service for the monument. Thanks to the West Bend Fire Department, West Bend Firefighter Charities, Local 2025, Bill Story, Mike and Cindy Tennis, Jeff and Nicole Gustafson, Larry and Paula Wheaton, Mike and Pam Heinen, Steve and Debbie Inhoff, Mary Lutz, Rich and Jane Labuda, Miller Monument, Ivan and Sons, Duquesne Masonry, West Bend Sand and Stone, Jackson Concrete, Heritage Hills Nursery, Stockhausen Excavating, DSR Services, West Bend Parks, and Boy Scout Troop 796. 
Lastly, I want to thank all the firefighters for the dedication and sacrifice you have given to the citizens of West Bend. That was from Ben Heinen. The last part of this ceremony, over the last 150 years, has not been without its sad and trying times. Lieutenant Schlefke spoke of one in 1980. We also had lost two members of our fire department along the way. Those two firefighters are Rudolph Schlamer in 1929. He was responding to the firehouse. There was a fire call and he was responding from his residence. His truck was struck by a train as he was coming to the firehouse to get his gear and get on the fire truck. He never made it home that day. Our second one happened in 1947, Edward Groth. They were at a fire and they were doing some overhaul and the chimney fell, struck him and he was killed. When we think of monuments and things like that, it's not about what we do, it's about what we gave. And these gentlemen gave all. And to walk us through the uh, memorial part of this ceremony today is, is Battalion Chief Tom Thrash. The bell, uh, welcome everybody. The bell ceremony uh, is to honor those that have gone before us uh, for all firefighters, uh, not only in West Bend, but across our great country. So to perform the bell ceremony, I call upon firefighter paramedic Chris Bell and firefighter paramedic Olivia Landowski. The men and women of today's fire service are confronted with more dangerous work environments than ever before. We are forced to continually change our strategies and tactics to accomplish our tasks. Our methods may change, but our goals remain the same as they were in the past. To save lives and to protect property, sometimes at terrible cost. This is what we do. This is our chosen profession. This is the tradition of a firefighter. The fire service of today is ever changing but is steeped in traditions 200 years old. One such tradition is the sound of a bell. In the past, as firefighters began their, began their tour of duty, it was the bell that signaled the beginning of the day's shift. Throughout the day and night, each alarm was sounded by a bell, which summoned these brave souls to fight fires and to place their lives in the jeopardy for, good, for the good of the, their fellow citizen. And when the fire was out and the alarm had come to an end, it was the bell that signaled to all the completion of the call. When a firefighter had died in the line of duty, paying the supreme sacrifice, it was the morning, morningful toll of the bell that solemnly announced a comrade's passing. We utilize these traditions as symbols, which reflect honor and respect on those who have given so much and who have served so well. To symbolize the devotion that these brave souls had for their duty, a special signal of three rings, three times. Each represents the end of our comrades' duty and that they will be returning to quarters. And so, to those who have selflessly given their lives for the good of their fellow man, their tasks completed, their duties well done, to our comrades, their last alarm they are going home. Now I'm going to read the firefighter's prayer. When I am called to duty, God, wherever flames may rage, give me strength to save a life whatever be its age. Let me embrace a little child before it is too late or save an older person from the horror of that fate. Enable me to be alert and hear the weakest shout and quickly and efficiently to put the fire out. I want to fill my calling to give the best in me, to guard my friend and neighbor and protect their property. And if according to your will, while on duty, I must answer death's call, 
Bless with your protecting hand my family, one and all. That concludes our ceremony. By now, I'm sure your ears are cold and your fingers are cold, so we invite you back to come back into the firehouse. We have coffee and hot chocolate. Not that we're giving you leftovers, but we have plenty of food that's left over from the open house that we had this morning. So feel free to have a bowl of chili and a hot dog. Thanks again for coming and come on in. Yeah.